we are really excited to hear from uh, Jeffrey and what he's doing. Hi, Jeff. How are you doing? Hi, Stan. Good. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today and handing the virtual floor over to you. Sounds great. And let me uh, let me just uh, share my screen uh, as I get this up for you. I want to uh, start off by saying hello to everyone. So wonderful to be here. And I want to uh, certainly uh, congratulate Stan and the entire team for this symposium. Uh, certainly happy to share with you uh, this presentation and happy to take questions, obviously, as well. Just a little bit more about me. Uh, I go by the hashtag heart leader on LinkedIn, uh, really focused on bringing more of our connecting of our hearts in the workplace. Really important that we do that. I am the son of a nurse and certainly have the privilege at Siemens Health and Ears to really work at how we bring eds and meds together to innovate, solve the most pressing leadership and culture issues so that our workforce is transformed. As, as, it, as it relates to this important topic, and I can't highlight how important this is, as I've heard even some of the other speakers talk about various topics, we all probably know that we are dealing with one of the most challenging times in the workplace and in society with mental health. But I'm going to challenge all of us to be thinking about the fact that when we think about our workplace, we must prioritize this. And I'm, I'm encouraged by the fact that we see more health tech companies launching new products, thinking about this, but we've got to really also focus on it at a humanistic way because we've got to make an impact. And so when we think about this employee well-being and creating a human-centered culture, we've got to think about it on how do we reduce stress? How do we reduce burnout? What do we do to change the way we do work, the way we leverage technology, the way we utilize different applications and solutions to make our workplace better for each and every one of us? Because ultimately, when it's better for us, it's better for our patients. We also have to think about it as how do we increase that job satisfaction and certainly the morale. And we can't ever forget the power of open communication. We know that when we openly communicate in a trust environment, when we have psychological safety there, it makes a huge impact and difference when we're all coming together in that way. And then certainly we can't forget the power of encouraging diversity equity, inclusion, and belonging. When we create a sense of belonging, when we create that sense of safety, that impact is definitely profound for everybody, not just for women, but for everybody. And then certainly the importance of prioritizing work-life balance will enhance certainly mental health and resilience. I always want to remind everyone about the amazing five essentials for workplace mental health and well-being framework that our own Surgeon General, Dr. Vivek Murthy, established and rolled out about a year and a half ago. It is available on the surgeongeneral.gov website. If your organizations or if you are not familiar with it, check it out. It's powerful. I want to highlight a key couple aspects around it, right? The idea, as you heard me say earlier, we've got to create more psychological safety in the workplace. And you see that on here, as Dr. Murthy calls, protection from harm. Very important elements here uh, that you will see as you dig deeper into it. Also, this idea of connection and community. Everybody wants, deserves, desires a connection and community. In the workplace, with our patients, in our communities, where we live, work, and play. But we've got to establish that, particularly in the workplace, because we spend more time in our work than oftentimes we do at home. And so I will share some data around that in just a short minute as well. And then you see Dr. Murthy call for this idea of work-life harmony, which we know is not easy in our society with technology and our busy lives, our children, our grandchildren, our colleagues, but we have to continue to prioritize it. The other aspect that Dr. Murthy calls for, which I think is profound, is this idea that we matter at work. Are we heard? Are we valued? Are we appreciated for whom we are? Do we get saluted, recognized, celebrated for the work that we do? Are we compensated fairly, equitably? Do we feel that we have a connection to the overall mission of the organization? And then finally, the idea of opportunity for growth, constant, continuous learning and development, constant investment in those respective areas as well. UKG, which I'm sure many of us are familiar with, has done some amazing research related to this. And this is really why I think it's so important when we talk about any aspect of mental health and wellness, focus on the data. In this research, they looked at 10 countries, 10 countries. And what was very interesting about this was they surveyed over 3,400 people. They specifically looked at the critical role that our jobs, leadership, and most importantly, managers play in 
aspects of mental health in and outside of the workplace. Transformative, right? Because when you see this data, it should not only be alarming, but it should really raise us to a call to action. What do we do to change this? It says in this report, and you can check it out on this link, that 69% of managers impact employees' mental health, more than doctors at 51%, therapists at 41%, and even the same as a spouse or a partner. And so think about that. If you are facing a manager that's impacting your mental health in a negative way and have a partner or a spouse or family member that's impacting it in a negative way, imagine why we're in the crisis that we're in. And then we also know that in the same report, more than 80% of employees said, I would rather have a good mental health than have a high paying job. We've got to really unpack that. And we've got to think about how do we create a community that makes people feel better from a mental health standpoint. I call it a make it or break it moment. How do we as leaders make it for another person or break it for another person? And we know we are seeing far too many stories of break it as compared to make it. We've got to make it. We've got to help create the culture that transforms lives, our organizations, and those that we serve. This quote from Pat Waiters from UKG speaks volumes. It says, we talk a lot about mental health in terms of a medical diagnosis or burnout. While those are serious issues, the day-to-day -day stressors we live with, especially those caused by our work, are what we should talk more about as leaders. We've got to always talk about these issues. We've got to be thinking about what we do to change them. We've got to be thinking about how we prioritize them for everyone. When we talk about population health, when we talk about health equity, we know mental health has to be a key item, but it also has to be an item within our own workforce because we can't serve our patients if we also don't serve our teams. Similarly, in, in the report, it went on to say that life isn't all milk and honey. And when leaders open up about their own struggles, they acknowledge employees are not alone and that it's okay not to be okay. Authentic, vulnerable leadership is the key to creating belonging at work and in turn, the key to solving the mental health crisis in the workplace. As you take time to review Dr. Murthy's framework, I believe what you will see there is tremendous opportunity for us as leaders and as organizations to prioritize mental health and wellness in the workplace. And why this is important is that we know we have to take care of those that are in our care, our teams. And ultimately through taking care of our teams, we take care of those that we all serve, our patients, our consumers, and so we have to truly understand this from a community, from a flock perspective, that we really have not only a duty, but also a responsibility to do all we can to support one another. And when we focus on it, we see the change in the impact that's there. For all of our HR folks that think about this, we can't just think about EAP. Yes, it's an important service, but this has to go above and beyond. This is talking about the DNA of us as an organization, how we treat one another, how we talk to one another, how we write an email to one another, all of the aspects of communication, how we interact with one another. All of these issues are certainly important. Happy to connect uh, further on this at all times and uh, you know, really appreciate the Hit Lab for having these important conversations. No, this is fantastic and really appreciate your time and uh, just a tremendous presentation. Thank you very much. Jeffrey, and looking forward to hearing from you in the future and all the great work you're doing. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.